So hello and welcome again to Michelle Mould and today I'm going to share with you my Fraser Price palette box and it's here in this lovely little blue box so when you open it up it just looks like a beautiful gold bar doesn't it so it does come in this lovely box but I'm just going to set that aside for a moment and you do get an instruction sheet um, which really um, helps you to see how you can place everything inside and it shows you how you um, can slot your half pans or full pans into these little grooves um, and uh, yeah it gives you cleaning instructions and everything so it does come with a lovely instruction uh, leaflet there but I will walk you through it I've just got my paintbrush ready because I'm going to be swatching some of those um, colours that are in my box that I use so at the side here it has a little clip that you move forward and that then becomes the rest for its um, feet basically and as you open it up you have got a little palette there that you can use you've got oh one's come out you've got a couple of palette spaces here for mixing you've even got a couple of little spots there this is for you to pour your water into and this is the container to put the water in and that all just slots really nicely in there like so I tend to just use those two um, spaces to mix my colors but I'm going to go through the colors that I've put in mine as you can see I've got a mixture of um, half pans I've got some full pans some of them are slightly different sizes because um, some of these are handmade and some of them are where I've used a empty um, half pan or full pan <clears throat> and I've put my um, uh, a, a tube of, of watercolour in, into those slots. So I'm just going to move that, where should we move that, maybe we'll move it this side. Let's see how we go. Will that still be in shot? Yes. And I will bring in my... Uh, we do that? No, right. We'll just move you around a bit more then. And then maybe... Yeah, we can, we can probably just about get that in. I've got my, my lovely ceramic brush holder this was a present from a friend so I don't know where that came from and the brush that I'm going to be using today is my Van Gogh size 8 round so I'll pop them over to the side and grab myself some water my trusty Kilner jar for water Just need a little cloth so we'll grab that as well and then we will swatch these colors out the ones that I have in my Fraser Price palette box so we're going to start with Polaris and this is a handmade watercolor and I got this one from tiny clouds um, for any of you that are interested and that is I haven't pre-wet any of these um, that is really creamy easy to to re-wet so let's have a little look at Polaris and there we are that's pretty much um, mass tone there full strength and I'll just add a bit more water to it and we'll just see what that looks like when it's 
watered down a bit there we go so that is polaris that's a really nice neutral it's a, a variation i think of a buff titanium and i always find that really useful on my palette the next color is and i might murder this name but monte amiate sienna and this is by um R car i think it's R car creations is what they call themselves um and that one is re-wetting quite nicely as well so this is a sienna and let's just have a look at that's well, a lovely earthy sienna like so and then we'll just water that down like so so that is our Monte Amiati Sienna by Arcar. Another Arcar one. This is called Fossil. Another so Arcar and Tiny Clouds. They are both handmade watercolours. So let's have a look at Fossil. I think the Sienna here and this fossil they they just look very natural kind of colors very earthy kind of colors there we go and then if we water that down a little bit that's and that looks like it's got some granulation going on there um let's have a look at the next one which is also our car Castle Earth. Add a bit more water there. And we'll see what this one's like in its mass tone. So Castle Earth. Oh, this one's much darker. Oh, it's really rich. If you're loving your natural earthy tones then all of these are going to suit you really well and there we go a little bit more watered down so this one's more much uh, war it's warmer than the castle earth and then to mix things up a little bit i have um, got ultramarine this is by i pronounce it mimary blue my my Marie Blue. So this is their Ultramarine, and it's a it is a beautifully bright Ultramarine. And then watered down. There we go. And it looks like I've made a splodge, but never mind. We will just mop that up. Okay. <clears throat> so the Mimary Blue Ultramarine was from a tube. Um, now moving on to another Arcar handmade colour called Vintage Green. Which I might have to add a bit more water to. There we go. So this is Vintage Green, which is a lovely natural kind of green. It's not very much like a circle, but we'll try. There we go. And then let's see what happens. Well, maybe I watered that down a bit much. There we go. We'll water that one down a little bit. Then this is another green, Verdant by R. Carl. And this is a brighter green. So, and it's an olivey green. I would call this an olivey green. And that doesn't look like a circle, but never mind. And then watered down on the side there 
Next, I have got um, a Payne's Grey. This is by Isero. Um, Ultramarine, Payne's Grey, um, two colours that are always useful to have on your palette. And this one is quite a nice bluey Payne's Grey. So um, some of the Payne's Grey, I have got some Winsor & Newton Payne's Grey, I'm trying to think, I have, I've got others, um, sometimes they're not quite as blue and obviously that's really dark, that Payne's Grey there. And then you would have seen this before on um, a previous palette that I was showing you, but this is the Holbein Brilliant Rose which I'm afraid I cannot live without. And there's our Holbein Brilliant Rose. Oh, I need to do the watered down version. There we go. So that can go really quite pale. I always have white gouache with every palette that I'm using. And obviously this probably isn't going to show up terribly well. But there is our white gouache. And I always use the Winsor & Newton Professional white gouache. The next one is another Tiny Clouds handmade colour called Virgo. And this is just gorgeous. This is a cornflower kind of blue it's my favorite blue and watered down it's quite pale okay then we have cobalt turquoise by Arca and this is a lovely turquoise this is what I call turquoise sometimes they're they're almost too green and too dark for me. This is what I would call my perfect turquoise. Watered down. Then we have Cool Indigo, another Arcar Creations. And yeah, this is pretty dark. And then watered down. So you can just see that the Payne's grey is slightly more grey, but it does have some blue. And I've also got the cool indigo there. I use a lot of these, these two colours, Payne's grey and indigo. This is a, a lovely colour called um, Shadow. And this is nice for doing things that are off into the far distance. It's got a purpley tinge to it, um, but also for doing shadows, um, as its name implies. And then our final one, which is going to take a bit of re-wetting by the looks of it, um, so I nearly always have a gold of some kind. This one I do know because I can see it's been squeezed out of the tube is the Schmincke gold. And we'll just leave that one as it is. I won't bother watering that one down. So there we go, let's move that out of the way. Those are the colours that I have in my Fraser Price palette box. So I'm just going to bring these up now, um, make them a little bit clearer for you. Polaris, Monte Amiate Siena, Fossil, Castle Earth, 
ultramarine and then we go to where are we vintage green verdant which has got yellowy undertones the verdant but it's a it's almost an olivey then we've got our Payne's grey we've got our brilliant rose white gouache Virgo which is has to be my favorite color on this palette all oh, together with cobalt turquoise I love both of them really and then cool indigo a rather special one called shadow and then the gold gold from Schmincke so that is what I have in my I'll just fold that back up again um, that's what I have in my Fraser oh, which way around does it go that way. <laughs> and that is oh what's in the way ah there we go like so and then you can see the clip on the side there and there it is my little gold nugget um, my Fraser Price palette box so I hope you enjoyed seeing what I have in my Fraser Price palette box maybe there's some handmade watercolors that you haven't seen before um, yeah and I will see you next time <laughs>